Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, at this time, I'd like to yield five minutes to a gentleman from New Mexico who was a pilot in the United States Air Force serving in the Philippines, uh, received a Distinguished Flying Cross and an Air Medal before returning to the United States. Five minutes. The gentleman from New Mexico is recognized for five minutes. Without objection. Mr. Speaker, I rise in opposition to this stay the course resolution because it is indeed a stay the course. It says blithely that we support the troops. The troops are in Iraq. They're fighting. We support the fight. We do not, on the other hand, support an escalation, which would be another course of action, nor do we present the other alternative that says bring them home. We can bring them home, increase, or stay the course. And so this stay the course resolution is one that is very curious indeed today. In the last two speakers, I've heard that there is no good military action left. That's a credible viewpoint. It's one that is expressed. And yet I ask my friends, why did not you have the courage to simply say, if there are no good alternatives left for the military, then bring them home. That's fair and adequate. I have also heard that it's a misguided conflict. I've also heard that our soldiers' work is done. If their work is done, please have the courage to bring them home. I want to speak today, Mr. Speaker, on behalf of our soldiers, the soldiers of today. I'll do it while remembering the soldiers of yesterday. Through no fault of my own, I served in the uh, Air Force during the Vietnam conflict. I say through no fault of my own because I was not a volunteer. I got there because I drew a very low draft number. As time has proved, it's going to be the only lottery that I'm going to win. But that lottery gave me a free pilot's, uh, a free pilot certificate and sent me to Vietnam to fly in 71, 72 parts of 73. I was in Vietnam during the time that Jane Fonda made her trip to the north, giving aid and comfort to the enemy. I was in Vietnam during the time that there were demonstrations in the streets back home. I was there during the time that our soldiers were cursed at and spit on. And today, as I beat around the back dusty roads of New Mexico, I encounter those same soldiers that I encountered back then. Those soldiers who are my age, who are on walkers, life has been difficult. There's a common greeting for soldiers of that era. It's welcome home, brother, or welcome home, sister, because they were never thanked for their duty and they were never welcomed home with parades, with yellow ribbons. We were snuck back in to the country and I've brought a couple of photos to help us remember. To remember the people who were trying to get out of Saigon, not just Americans, but those people who had sided with us. They're crawling up the ladder trying to get into the helicopter. The helicopters proceeded out to carriers. The carriers were then, the helicopters were then pushed off the side of the carriers. This is the way that we left Vietnam. I bring this up because I'm beginning to see the same thing today. My colleague yesterday spoke of this resolution and mentioned that the resolution was vague, where people of very different beliefs could believe that it represented them. If you support the war, you believe that it supports your position. If you're opposed, you'll somehow believe that this is the one step that's going to stop us and yet it really does nothing. The vague language, that clever language, Sheep points out this is not a time for cleverness. It's a time for decision because I will be a constant voice for our soldiers. I read and I hear the comments today. I read when uh, Chrissy Hyde, Hind says let's get rid of all the economic expletive this country represents bring it on I hope the Muslims win I hear from the left William Arkin 
these shoulder, soldiers should be grateful that the American public do still offer their support to them and their respect so we pay the soldiers a decent wage, take care of their families, provide them with housing, medical care, vast social support systems, and ship obscene amenities into the war zone for them. We support them in every possible way, and their attitude is that we should, in addition, roll over and play dead. Our friends on the other side of the aisle, I do not discount their intent, but I know what they're trying to do. They're doing the same thing that was done in Vietnam. They're trying to feed that hungry tiger that he lives on the left, that hates the American way of life, that hates the American military, that will do anything to discredit, disrespect, and discount. Request an additional minute. To yeah. Give the gentleman additional 30 seconds. Gentlemen, we will do anything to discredit, disrespect, and discount the service of our soldiers. My friends, you will not be able to appease the left with this toothless resolution that you're presenting. You know that your own members, some of your members have called for defunding. The defunding is going to allow the exit that looks like this, and it's going to allow the mass catastrophe, the mass killings that are going to occur and that's all a part of the problem. But before you allow your friends, who would never vote for me, who disrespect our soldiers so much, before you empower them and before you encourage them, I would recommend that you think carefully about just cleanly bringing our soldiers home. If you're going to do, if you are going to do nothing in the resolution, you have an obligation to do no harm. This resolution does no harm. This resolution empowers our enemy, encourages our enemy, and encourages those people who are going to disrespect our soldiers. I recommend a vote against the resolution.